Welcome to BaseballGuys.com. I'm your host, Ray Flowers. As with a lot of the around the horn pieces here at BaseballGuys.com through the course of this season, the big news with this report is another injured player, and it's unfortunately bad news for Grady Sizemore, the Indians, and Grady Sizemore owners. Now, Sizemore was looking to rebound from a really bad season last year. He had a couple of procedures done to help get his body back in shape. Unfortunately, his knee betrayed him this year. The hope was that the surgery he had today would be something that would set him back six to eight weeks. But unfortunately, once they got in there, saw the damage and looked around, it was determined that microfracture surgery was needed. Sizemore will now be out of action for six to nine months. We've seen players have a lot of difficulty coming back from this surgery at times. It's not at all clear whether Sizemore will be able to return to the 2020 form that he showed previously. We'll have to hope that happens. He should be at full strength by the start of the 2011 season, but he's done for the rest of 2008. Trevor Crowe is currently taking the playing time, but I have to think Michael Brantley, who has more upside and is someone the team really is looking to long term, will get a shot at some serious production, I mean playing time, excuse me, here in the second half. Shifting to the National League, we've got Carlos Beltran, another player with a knee injury, another player with that 2020 capability. News a little bit better with Beltran. We're still probably looking at him being out for four or so weeks. Probably not going to see him until after the All-Star break, but he went two for six in an extended spring training game today. Though I would again caution you, he didn't run bases at full speed. He hasn't played defense yet. He still has got a long way to go before he's ready to get back on the field. Though unlike Sizemore, it does look like Beltran will be able to contribute something in the second half of 2010. Out in the Bay Area, where I live here, the Oakland A's may or may not have received some good news. We'll have to wait and see what the official word is from the club with the forearm of Brian, uh, Brett Anderson. Now, there are conflicting reports a little bit. At this time, it's not believed Anderson is going to need surgery on that forearm. He had the forearm strain. One of the disabled has came back and looked very good, but in that second outing in his return from the injury, it went up and bit him again. We don't have a timetable. Even if he's able to avoid surgery, we don't know if he's going to be out weeks, months. We'll have to wait and see that the situation is clarified. But again, the sketchy reports that we have at this point, the good news seems to be that Anderson won't have to go under the knife for surgery on that forearm. Vladimir Guerrero returns to action on Friday for the Rangers. Uh, he had a freak accident in batting practice, hit a ball, bounced off the, the cage, uh, went back and hit him in the eye. I guess the eye is really swollen. He's got some issues with that, but he doesn't have any issues with seeing the ball, so he's going to be back in the lineup on Friday. Vlad, who's only available at utility spot in the majority of fantasy leagues, looks to be in line to pick up a lot of playing time in the next couple weeks with interleague play. So check your league eligibility rules because it might be a scenario where Vladimir Guerrero will be qualifying at outfield sometime pretty soon. Gary Matthews Jr. of the Mets. Well, Gary Matthews Jr. is no longer on the Mets. He's been demoted to the minor leagues. Still owed roughly $17 million for the rest of this season and next year. Uh, Matthews is uh, going to hope to go down to AAA, make things uh, a little bit more difficult in the Mets in terms of trying to decide whether or not he deserves to be on the roster. The Mets could look to move him, though You know, we'll have to wait and see if any team would bite. The Mets aren't paying him a lot of that salary. It's the Angels that are picking up the majority of that money. Look for Angel Pagan, obviously, to continue to be the guy there in the outfield for the Mets, at least until Carlos Beltran returns. Alex Gordon is a player who's also looking to return. He's down in AAA right now, and he has been flat out scalding the baseball. Hitting over 360, he's got an OPS of over 1,200 as he works on his, his ability to play the outfield, learning a new position being a third baseman and all. The GM, Dayton Moore of the Royals, came out and said, look, as great as he's hitting, he's not ready to play defense, and we don't expect to see him back anytime soon, which is you know, kind of rough news if you're Alex Gordon. Again, hitting over 360 and OPS of over 1,200, you'd think they'd find a way to get you some work with the big league club. Doesn't look like it's going to happen short term. I still would think at some point in the second half, he's got to be back on that club. They've got to see what they've got in Alex Gordon. It's kind of a make or break time with him in his career. Uh, and then finally, we've got the situation with the Giants. You can read more about that if you click on the link uh, to Five Questions, which accompanies this article. Uh, the Giants brought in Pat Broll, a local boy who grew up here in the Bay Area. Gave him a chance in the minors. He looked really good. The team called him up because they need a bat. They need someone to help spark a sagging offense. Now, remains to be seen if Broll will be anything more than a spot starter. Hard to see if Buster Posey's playing first and Aubrey Huff's in left field where Broll really fits in. Burl still has power. He struggled since uh, the start of the last season uh, with the Rays in the batting average department. It's been awful. Maybe a return to a situation where he plays in the field since he was mostly a designated hitter with the Rays and a return to the National League will help spark Burl. If he gets hot, the Giants could roll with him. But again, I don't think he's going to be a player worthy of mixed league attention in the fantasy game. I just don't think he's going to get enough playing attention. John Bowker was demoted. That obviously 
really hurts his value in NL only leagues being that he's no longer with the big league club. It'll be interesting to see what the Giants do moving forward. Pat Roll might get a shot if he comes out blasting. Again, I'm Ray Flowers, BaseballGuys.com. Thanks for joining me here on Around the Horn at BaseballGuys.com. And don't forget to follow me at Twitter at Twitter.com backslash BaseballGuys.